Will the standard range plus version of the Model 3 be going away shortly after battery day? I'm Jonathan Stewart and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Elon recently made some comments in the Q2 2020 earnings call where he mentioned some things about the cost of Tesla's vehicles and also the range of Tesla's vehicles. These statements have led me to believe that the Model 3 Standard Range Plus will be going away and it will be replaced with something else. Let's talk about why Tesla could remove this as an option for the Model 3 and what they would replace it with. Currently, I believe there are two big reasons why EV adoption is being slightly held up. The first reason is because electric vehicles generally cost more than internal combustion engine vehicles. And the second big issue that I believe is holding back EV adoption is the fact that there haven't been a lot of long range electric vehicles until recently. Over the last several years, Tesla has been dominating the EV market. And if you follow Tesla really closely, it can appear like electric vehicles are doing really well. But the truth is global EV adoption is still in the low single digits when you compare that to ICE or internal combustion engine vehicles. So in order for Tesla's mission to transition the world to sustainable energy and sustainable transportation to become a reality, the cost of electric vehicles needs to come down. Of course, Tesla has been doing their part and the cost of Tesla's vehicles starting now at $37,990 is the lowest it's ever been. And while this roughly $38,000 Tesla Model 3 is a really good deal, it is still too expensive for a lot of people globally and in the United States. Here's a clip from the Q2 2020 earnings call where Elon Musk had something to say about this topic. It is important to make the car affordable. I think we will not succeed in our mission if we do not make the cars affordable. Um, like the thing that bugs me the most about where we are right now is that our cars are not affordable enough. Uh, we need to we need to fix that. Like I think just we want to be like slightly profitable and maximize growth and make the cars as affordable as possible. That's like what, what we're trying to achieve. So as Elon Musk said, it's really important that Tesla continue to reduce the price of their vehicles as much as possible, and this will help their mission of sustainable transportation becoming more of a reality for a vast majority of the world. While the 250 mile EPA rated range of the Standard Range Plus Model 3 is sufficient for many people for most use cases, in order for an electric vehicle to really fully replace an ICE or internal combustion engine vehicle, I believe the magic number for the EPA rated range is somewhere closer to 300 plus miles. Here's what Elon Musk had to say about this topic once again in the Q2 2020 conference call. I, th I think the new normal for range is going to be just in US EPA terms, uh, you know, approximately 300 miles. So I think people will really come to expect that as, um, you know, some number close to 300 miles as, as normal, you know, that, that, that's a standard expectation. Um, uh, because you do need to take into account, like, you know, is it very hot outside or very cold or, you know, do, are you driving up a tall mountain um, with, with a full load? Uh, and, and it's a, uh, you know, people don't want to have a, you know, get get to the destination with like uh, 10 miles range. They, they want some regional reasonable margin. So I think 300 is going to be really, or well, close to 300 is going to be a new normal. You know, call it 500 kilometers, basically. So now the big question still exists. How do we balance these two seemingly contradictory elements, having a low cost EV with a large amount of range, 300 plus miles of range? So as I said at the beginning of the video, my theory is that soon, and I expect sometime around battery day or shortly thereafter, the standard range plus model three will go away as an option. I believe the standard range plus will be replaced by a longer range rear wheel drive model three with a different battery pack. We already know based on what Elon Musk said on Twitter that Tesla is not going to make the standard range Model Y, but they're only going to make a rear wheel drive long range version instead. Tesla has also gone away from having smaller battery pack choices in the Model S and the Model X, sticking with only around a 100 kilowatt hour pack for the entire line. 
It seems very probable once Tesla gets the price of batteries low enough that they would get rid of a lower range EV and stick with all EVs over 300 miles. Here are some battery developments that could allow for Tesla to sell a Model 3 with over 300 miles of range for about the same price as the current Standard Range Plus or maybe even cheaper. The first option is that Tesla may opt to put an iron phosphate based lithium ion battery in the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive version in the United States. Here's another clip from the Q2 2020 earnings call where Elon Musk talks about how in China they're adding these batteries to the long range version of the Model 3 and that they're able to get around 300 miles or 500 kilometers of range. There's like two general classes of, of cell. There's like the iron phosphate and then the nickel based. Uh, nick, the nick, nickel based cells have um, higher energy density, so longer range. Um, obviously those are needed for something like the semi um, where Every unit of mass that you add in battery pack, you have to subtract in cargo. So you, it's very important to have a mass efficient and long range uh, pack for full batteries. Um, however, what we're seeing with uh, our that passenger vehicles is that our powertrain efficiency and uh, sort of tire efficiency, you know, drag coefficient, like basically all of the th things that, like, you know, our HVAC uh, go, going to a heat pump, um, Basically, our total vehicle efficiency has gotten good enough with uh, Model 3, for example, that we actually are comfortable having an iron phosphate battery pack in Model 3 in China, um, and you know and that that'll be in volume production later this year. Um, so we think that you probably get a, a range of almost 300 miles uh, with an iron phosphate pack, taking into account a whole bunch of uh, of powertrain and other vehicle efficiencies. And, and that, that frees up a lot of capacity for things like the Tesla Semi um, and, and uh, you know, other projects that require higher energy density. So, yeah, so you have like two, two supply chains that you can tap into, iron phosphate or, or, or nickel. While iron phosphate batteries are less energy dense, they are a lot less expensive to manufacture because they don't have really expensive cobalt. Elon Musk mentioned some of the benefits of using the iron phosphate batteries in some of the vehicles that don't need as much energy density, like they're really efficient vehicles, especially when we talk about the most efficient Tesla vehicle that is in existence right now, the rear wheel drive version of the Model 3, you could do with a little less energy density and still achieve a very good range. As Elon Musk mentioned in that quote, this gives them another supply chain and another source for batteries. This would allow them to allocate a lot more of their current battery tech to build more Model Ys and more Model 3s in the all-wheel drive and the performance variants. It also makes a lot more cells available for the Tesla Semi as well. There are a few news articles that do support what I'm talking about here. Here's a quote from a recent CNBC article that was published in June of this year talking about the cost of battery production for Tesla. Quote, it is going to be hard to get below $100 per kilowatt, Ming said, of the current nickel cobalt chemistry. Nickel currently ranges in price from roughly one third to as much as one half the price of cobalt. With lithium iron phosphate, which does not require nickel or cobalt, lab research shows there is a possible pathway to drive the pricing down as low as $80 per kilowatt hour. So as this article pointed out, and as I mentioned earlier, the price per kilowatt hour for an iron phosphate battery has the potential to be much lower than the current batteries that Tesla is using. But once again, we have that hurdle of energy density. But fortunately, there is one big thing that can help us with the energy density of these cells. According to a Clean Technica article that was published February of this year, quote, Cell to pack technology refers to innovative approaches to battery pack design to optimize for strengths of the LFP cells. The cells are typically more heat tolerant than nickel cobalt cells and are less prone to thermal runaway. So potentially need relatively less weight and volume of cooling and packaging material. This means that although the lithium iron phosphate cells themselves may be only around 66% of the energy density of the leading nickel cobalt cells, an LFP pack can thus perhaps get towards 70 to 80% of the energy density of the nickel cobalt packs. 
So as this article points out, these lithium iron phosphate battery cells lend themselves more to a direct cell to pack design and it allows you to skip the module stage and the potential reduction in some of the packaging material may allow for a lot more energy density than we might think. According to an Inside EVs article that was published by EvanX February of this year, they quoted a report here from the Karn Energy Research Advisors, which said that Tesla's 2019 price for the entire battery pack was around $158.27 per kilowatt hour. According to this article, the average for the rest of auto manufacturers was somewhere around $200 per kilowatt hour. However, now that we're in 2020, I believe Tesla has reduced this price even further. Let's take a look at a chart and see just how much of a difference it could make if Tesla were able to reduce the battery pack prices to $100 or $80 at the pack level per kilowatt hour. If they are currently paying at the pack level around $140 per kilowatt hour, that would mean that the total battery pack cost is $10,500. The standard range plus model 3 has a pack size of roughly 50 kilowatt hours and at that same price per kilowatt hour of the pack that would make the total cost for the 50 kilowatt hour pack around seven thousand dollars now the math becomes really interesting when you look at an iron phosphate battery that they could potentially put a 70 kilowatt hour iron phosphate battery in the same size of a 75 kilowatt hour NCA battery and if they were able to do that for around $100 per kilowatt hour that would mean that the total battery pack cost for a 70 kilowatt hour iron phosphate pack could possibly be the same as their current standard range plus battery. This math becomes even more interesting when you look at an iron phosphate battery that they could potentially get down to $80 per kilowatt hour. That would mean that the battery pack could only cost $5,600. Now I do realize that Tesla may not be able to squeeze in 70 kilowatt hours of iron phosphate battery capacity in the Model 3, but if they get creative they might figure out a way. Even if they're only able to squeeze in somewhere around 60 kilowatt hours or 65 kilowatt hours, that's still an increase over the current pack at a lower price. This kind of price reduction could allow Tesla to bring out a rear wheel drive Model 3 with nearly 300 miles of range for roughly the same price as a current standard range plus. That's the way I believe Tesla is going to go and we'll find out in a few months if I'm right. But there's also an alternate theory and that's Tesla's current Roadrunner project, their pilot battery line at Fremont. It's obviously possible that I'm wrong and Tesla will not bring these iron phosphate batteries to the United States. They'll just allow them to only be in China. And instead, at this pilot line facility, they might have developed a new chemistry or a new battery that uses Maxwell's dry battery electrode technology and allows them to produce a much cheaper cell. Tesla has set this line up at the Cato building at the production facilities in Fremont. And we do know that we'll find out a lot more about this production facility and this pilot line at Battery Day. And this could be a part of that puzzle as well. But I do believe that Tesla, instead of putting the newest battery tech in the Model 3 rear-wheel drive version, I believe they will save this new battery pack for the Cybertruck, the Semi, the Plaid Model S and X, and potentially the whole line of the Model S and X. So in conclusion, at Tesla's Battery Day coming up in a few months, I believe they will announce their new lineup. However all this shakes out, if Tesla is able to achieve some of these things that I believe they are going to be able to, this would continue to increase Tesla's lead in the marketplace and give them even more of a competitive advantage. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click that bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button and sharing it out on social media. I also wanted to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters which support me every month and help me bring this content to you. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.